All right, I'm back on my dashboard and I can see I've already completed 75%. I've added people, I've added my cast, crew, locations, and scenes. So next is schedule. To set up my shooting schedule, I'm gonna choose my first shooting day, so my start date, which we'll say is on Monday, and then the last shooting day. So I'll say that's near the 18th. Then I choose my typical working days, so I'm gonna do a five day week, and click add days. This is going to populate my schedule. All right, so here I am in my schedule, and as I scroll down, I can see that these recessed sections represent off days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are off, and then back on on Monday. Over here, the navy circles are the day numbers. I can edit this if, for instance, I'm doing a pickup shoot and I'm starting in at day 10 or something like that. If I edit that, it will cascade all the way down. I'm going to change that back to start at 1. If I want to add an extra off day somewhere, I can click on this insert off day to insert an off day. And I can even add off days to that. And you can see it's going to cascade that date change down the schedule. I can also delete a day, which instead of cascading that change down the schedule, it will simply convert that day to an off day. If you need to edit your schedule, you can go here and rename it or delete it. You can also add a new schedule here if you want to have multiple schedules. All right, these are my days, and every day has a call sheet. So to create a call sheet, click on the Add Call Sheet button. Go figure. You're going to start by choosing your call time for the day. Now this is the time picker. You can drag it around or you can just click on the, the time that you want. Hours, minutes, a.m., p.m. So I'm going to say our call time's at 8.30 and the wrap time's at 7.30 p.m. All right, create. Okay, my new call sheet is created. I'm going to collapse the left menu just to give us a little bit more working room. Over here on the left is my settings for the call sheet. And over here on the right, just loaded, is the preview of the call sheet. I can click on this flip button to flip over to the back of the call sheet or the front. These sections up here represent different areas of the call sheet or different types of information that are on the call sheet. There's day info, there's scenes, there's cast, there's extras and stand-ins, notes, pre-calls, and miscellaneous. All right, I'm going to walk you through very briefly each of these tabs. Times allows you to choose key times for the day. It's mostly going to edit information in this top area. So if I change the call time to 7.30 a.m., you can see it will update up here in my preview. I can add a shooting call, say 9 a.m. I can add breakfast start times, first meal start times, second meal start times, meal durations, and, and meal head counts. So let me add that information quick. All right, I got that all the time information in there. Next, I can go to the Locations tab. This is where I select the addresses for the key locations of the day. These drop-downs are populated by the information that's in my Location tab over here to the left. So I'm going to choose one of those, or if I need to, I can add a new location. You can also add a custom location if you have a specific need, such as um, Grip truck parking. And that will show up here. Next tab is weather and more. You can type in all this weather information manually or you can click on this fetch weather data which will load in the, the weather information automatically. You can choose who's, who's the set medic is, some additional information such as the total number of shooting days, script version, and the schedule version. Next tab is the scenes. To add a scene to your shooting schedule, click Add Scenes, and you'll see your scene list come up over here on the right. 
you can search and filter this if you need to. When you find the scene, hover over it and click the blue add arrow, which is going to add it to the bottom of the schedule to the left. Once you've added all the scenes to the day that you want, then you can close the scene drawer and reorder these as needed. I can also add in this, these banners if I want to by dragging and dropping. This allows me to add custom text. Many people use this for company move. And then maybe in the description they'll say 20 minute drive. Um, but you could really use that for anything. If you want to add an advanced schedule down here, go to the advanced schedule tab. Now, the advanced schedule is synced with the next day's call sheets schedule. So you can either add a, add a call sheet to the next day by clicking on this button. For this example, I'm just actually going to turn off the advanced schedule so that it's not showing. The next tab is the cast tab. I can choose from this drop down a cast member and click on them to add them to the day. Now, set here is smart in that it's looked at the scenes that I have scheduled for the day. And it's saying that it's found four cast members that are tagged in those scenes that are not on my call sheet. So I'm going to click this blue button to add those cast members. You can see there it has added them to the call sheet. For each cast member, I can choose times for pickup, arrival, blocking rehearsal, makeup wardrobe, set time, and even add a custom note. Like don't, I can't spell, don't forget water. I can choose a work status for, for individuals too, such as start work, work, work finish, start work finish, etc. All right, I finished adding in all of my cast members' information for the day, and now I'm going to go over to extras and stand ins. This is pretty simple, so I won't take long here. You just enter the quantity, a description of what, what these extras or stand ins are, so you might say, pedestrians, the type, these are background, and then what time they are supposed to arrive, and what time they're supposed to be ready to be on set. Then hit add to add them to the day, and you'll see them show up in this area of the call sheet. Next is notes. There are several different types of notes. So there's general notes. We'll start with the front notes, which are going to show up here on the front of the call sheet. This is great for important type of information, like, like where to park or reminding the crew to dress warmly. Then there's back notes, which if I flip over the call sheet here and scroll down, I see there's this notes section. This section is great for adding specific notes that are mostly crew related. So a great example is shuttle leaves from the hotel at 9 a.m. or let's say 7 a.m. We also have a section for quote of the day. If you don't want to include the quote of the day, you can toggle it off here. Lastly, you can add department notes. These will show up on the front of the call sheet under the department notes section right here. Simply select a department that the note is for and then add the note. And it shows up right here. All right, next is crew pre-calls. This section mostly occur, this section relates to the back of the call sheet, so I'm going to flip it over. This is where you can add pre-calls for your crew. You see here it's broken them down into departments and the individuals within that department. Now there's a lot going on here, so I'm going to go through it step by step. From the very left, you see an eye icon. If you want to hide someone from the call sheet, click on that. 
and they will be hidden from the back of the call sheet. You can also do the same thing with the department if you want to remove an entire department from the call sheet. Next, there's this star icon. That will mark the, this person as a key crew member. I'm gonna mark a couple of these. What that will do is add them to the top left of the call sheet, which you can see here over at the front. So these are mostly gonna be your producers, associate producers, directors, unit production managers, etc., that get starred. Next there's a phone icon which marks this person as a key contact. So maybe I'll mark the producer, and if I have an assistant director, I'll do that as well. And then by flipping over to the back, I'll see that it's added them to this section here under useful contacts on the back. Anyone you mark with the phone icon, it will include their phone number here on the back. Now for the actual call times. Say I want to call someone 20 minutes early. I would click on the add pre-call button next to their name, and I'll see here their updated call time based on this duration. The default is half an hour, so I'm gonna change that to 20 minutes. So I'm essentially telling it to call them 20 minutes before the general crew call. If I wanted to invert this, so I was calling them 20 minutes after the general crew call, crew call, I could hit delay, which would flip it over to be 20 minutes later. I can always remove that, and it will be back to the standard crew time. Now, if I want to sit, tell someone something other than a time, I can select this text button here and type in any, any text that I want to say. So an example would be off or an A or maybe per CC or anything like that. And I can see here that at this person's spot on the back of the call sheet, it has updated their call time. Now the same concept applies for department pre-calls. If I add a department pre-call, it will apply to everyone in the department who does not have an individual pre-call set. So I've added a department pre-call of 30 minutes and everyone in the department is now called at 8 instead of 8.30, except for this person who has a specific individual pre-call. And if I wanted to edit the producer's pre-call, I could change their time to maybe half an hour after. And I can see here that now they have a specific call time. I'm going to remove all of these pre-calls. Okay, I got all my pre-calls set how I want them. So now time for the last tab, which is miscellaneous production info. Right now on this tab, all there is is production reminders, which show up on the front of the call sheet here. They're pretty small. This just allows you to check reminders that you want to show and uncheck those you don't want to show. You can also drag them to rearrange the order that they show up in. All right, my, my call sheet's looking pretty good, so now I want to pass it out for approval. At any time, I can click Download Prelim PDF, which will start generating a PDF. This can sometimes take up to 20 seconds, so be a little bit patient. Once that's done, I get this screen saying my prelim is ready, and I can click to download it. And just to pop that open and show what it looks like, there's the prelim PDF, and it's watermarked as well. All right, our call sheet looks great. Congrats on getting this far. And the next step is to publish it, which means sending it out to the whole cast and crew. Check out the next video in this walkthrough where I'll take you through each step of that and how it works. It's much shorter than this video, don't worry. <laughs> Feel free to comment on the videos if you have questions or suggestions, um, and you can always email us at support at and we'll do our best to help you out. Thanks for watching.